Welcome to Silver Heist. Thank you to our returning subscribers and guests. So I have had a silver stacking strategy for a little while, but I've had a recent change in strategies that I want to talk about. So let me show you where I've been. I haven't been stacking for a super long amount of time, maybe over a year and a half, but I started with constitutional silver because there was something I was familiar with. I had collected coins as a child, so I was aware of the silver content of coins and the cutoff years as being when the silver was taken out of our money. So I knew about the value of it. And so I also thought $10 face value worth of silver was a good amount to buy. And so I started to buy it at local coin shows. So I thought that that was enough of a volume to get a decent price on, but not too big of a purchase. So now that I've started to accumulate constitutional silver or junk silver to a certain amount, I had a vague notion that I would do this for a while and then at some point consider but getting gold. But I didn't really have a strategy for gold. What I had was a strategy for just getting more and more silver, which wasn't bad. I mean, it wasn't a bad strategy. I kept the premiums low. I stuck with what I knew. I bought more and more silver as I could afford it. I only paid with cash or cash equivalents. I didn't buy it with credit. So I kept it within reason. And then as I branched out a little bit from constitutional into bullion, I picked up some bullion. So I think the nice thing about, so the nice thing about either constitutional or bullion is that the premiums are pretty low. So the other thing about constitutional silver is that, you know, a dollar is a dollar. So a dollar and halves is the same as a dollar and quarters. For every ten dollars of face value of any of these coins, it's about seven ounces of silver. So what we're looking at here is forty-five ounces of silver. Uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars worth of face, 35 ounces plus 10, that's 45 ounces of silver. So currently, the gold to silver ratio is 90 or even higher. So it takes 90 ounces of silver to get you one ounce of gold. So I had a vague notion of maybe continuing to purchase and stockpile silver and at some future date I would because of the bulk would just keep growing where I would want to lock in my value into gold and physically downsize into something more manageable. So I think I had a change of heart. So one thing that I've learned in stacking silver is that I'm more of a collector or a stacker and I'm not a flipper. So I don't have what it takes to flip collectible coins into profit to then just buy more silver. So I've kept it in terms of simple by sticking with constitutional silver or bullion. So then I have to question whether I have what it takes to flip silver into gold. So for me, at 100 ounces of silver or more, I definitely needed a gold plan and I was working towards that effect when unfortunately just as I was zooming in on making a decision on gold it went from 1275 to 1400 in the span of six weeks so at that point I just decided that silver is one game and gold is another game and I want to be in the gold game too 
So I have purchased some gold. So I bought a random year date piece of gold. This is 2003. And the size I bought was a bit of a stretch. But hopefully this was the right decision. So I bought a half ounce of gold. So I bought American Gold Eagle. It's a beautiful coin. It's recognizable. It's one of the most purchased pieces of gold bullion out there. So to me, this was sort of keeping it simple. I considered that maybe I would get more bang for my buck, or maybe I should have a smaller size than a half ounce like a quarter ounce or a tenth ounce, or maybe getting those, those French rooster coins from the early 1900s or any of those European equivalents. So I considered doing that, but I thought that perhaps going with an American Gold Eagle would be the better bet. With a 90 to one silver to gold ratio, 90 ounces of silver, one ounce of gold, 45 ounces of silver, one half ounce of gold. So I'm not saying that I am no longer buying silver and I'm only focused on gold. What I am saying is that I want both. So there's a silver game and there's a gold game and I want to be in both games. So the silver game has been a great game and frankly I think it has some great features and benefits in terms of budgeting out of cash flow on a frequent basis by $10 in face value in silver, which I'm fortunate enough to do. And so as you do that at each interval, you get positive feedback that you're turning cash into something that is tangible and is a hedge against inflation and is it's an investment that you can hold it's a purchase you're spending money but you're saving money because you always have something of value as opposed to buying a hundred dollars worth of nike you have a hundred dollars worth of silver so there's positive feedback at each interval now, I think the tougher thing about gold is that I'm not going to be in a position to just go out, boom, and buy a piece of gold. I think for me, what I'm going to have to do is purchase some silver, save for gold, purchase some more silver, save more for gold, purchase some silver, save a little bit more for gold, then buy the gold. So that's going to be a little harder because at least when you're purchasing silver, you've locked in your purchase here. You're just building up some fiat savings, and then striking. I run a small risk that if I save money for gold, that I truly keep it earmarked for gold. And then the other risk I have is that perhaps the interval is so long that as soon as I'm ready to purchase, I'm gonna to wanna to purchase. And the price might be up, the price might be down. So I think maybe the more frequent the interval the more the dollar cost averaging uh, is beneficial. But the less frequent the interval, the more you're at the mercy of the up and down. I'm excited to have a piece of gold. I'm excited to have my silver stack. So silver is money. Gold is money. Everyone needs money. That's why they call it money.